start with, we're gonna load the grommets into this bracket. The way this goes is it's gonna attach to the tappet cover like this and then hold the radiator off the front. We're going to shove each grommet by pinching the grommet and kind of forcing it through the hole with your finger. Um, this is kind of tricky. It's flexible and rubber, so just go along, fold it and push, fold and push. Eventually, you'll get the grommet to pop through. You're gonna do it like that. Once you have all the grommets installed, there are these little metal offset sleeves like this. And you're gonna stick that in each one of these rubber grommets. You're gonna push that metal through so that it's like that. You're gonna do that to all four of them. So we're gonna use a eight millimeter socket here and uh, pop this valve tappet cover off. The uh, OEM uh, air box isn't here, thankfully. So it makes clearance up front much easier. If the factory air box was here, uh, this would have to be removed first, but we already installed. I'll show you, it's called a Chimera intake. That's the k and filter on the front. That's the Chimera cold air intake. And what it does is it sends the air down that tube right over here into the throttle body on top of the engine, which is this operation right here. And that's where the fuel injector over here, right here, squirts fuel into the intake on the top of the engine right there. And then it goes through the engine, the spark plug lights on fire, and then it gets blown out the bottom. And Honda even included, for the fuel injection computer, a narrow band uh, oxygen sensor. We're gonna take these bolts out here like this, and we wanna capture the original gasket that's present in here, because I don't have a replacement gasket for the tappet cover. And we're gonna take that tappet cover off and that O-ring in there is what we want to transfer to the new part. So I use a razor blade to get this started, but there's um, four little retainer dimples along the edge. One, two, three, and four. But that O-ring pops out. And then you just drop it directly into here. It press fits nicely. And then you place that tappet cover back on the engine. This is an M6 by 15 bolt that is included with the Kotako kit. You can see that it seats nice and flush into the tappet cover. Then we're gonna use a tool to tighten it down. M6 by 15 nut into the upper part of the tappet cover. Just Tighten that down, like that. Okay, so I've got a quarter inch adapter on here, which accepts my metric M6 security key. And we're going to use that to tighten down the tappet covers to 12 Newton meters or about eight foot pounds. Get the, get the first one snug and do the same thing for the second one. Just snug at first. And then, then you want to torque them down to specifications. So this is just past hand tight. You don't want to vibrate free. Okay. Okay, we're gonna take these flat top uh, metric inset bolts like this and just set this in here. Okay, so we added the washers for the instructions back to this bracket. I'm just gonna snug this down finger tight. The whole procedure here is experimental because I haven't watched the video instructions. I'm just trying to do it from the printed instructions. I dropped one of my bits in the head here. Thankfully I got a little magnet to recover it. This is the M5 
bit that's required for tightening these flathead deals. Um, okay, so we're gonna take the bracket back off um, the tappet cover here and mount the bracket to the oil cooler first. All right, so we're gonna mount the bracket to the oil cooler here like this with these long bolts. To take these bolts off of here like this, this is a 15 millimeter. We need the banjo bolt with its crush washers going directly into the clutch cover. So you're gonna have a crush washer on the front and back side. And this is the oil out. So the clutch cover is gonna send oil out this way into the radiator and then get cooled off and go back in through the top. So you got the banjo connections on here, finger tight like this. We're probably gonna send the in over the top this way, like that, and the out. Okay, so your radiator is gonna go like that. So we want the banjo bolt. We get a washer, a crush washer on each side. We're gonna thread that, thread that assembly right into the top of the radiator. And you want the oil line to be pointed at an angle back in the direction where it's gonna go. I'm gonna send the hot outbound oil over to here and then send the cooled oil back across the top of the engine into there. All right, we figured out a rough path. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna send this at about a 45 degree angle and then we're gonna angle this one out just a little bit so that when this is in place, we want the oil line coming out here kind of floating off to the side um, or we're, we can bend it a little bit and have it go in towards the center. But the idea is we're gonna have this pipe go up across the intake and connect and then down to here. And we're gonna use on the end of the hose these clamps like that to tighten them on. But first, we have to tighten the banjo bolts down to 15 newton meters. That's around um, seven foot pounds on the meter here, 15 newton meters. So once you've determined your route, go ahead and tighten all four of the banjo bolts down. Then you're gonna be attaching your lines. All right, we're gonna tighten these ones to 15 newton meters. Okay, with the hose clamp on there, you're gonna use a blade type screwdriver and after you snug the hose onto the barb, you're going to tighten down the hose clamp and do it in a way that makes it easy to access in the future if you need to redo anything. So I'm gonna point this out and down so that when this is in there, it's easy to access from the underside of the fender. So you wanna design it, design your clamps in a way that are easy to undo in the future if you need to undo them while they're mounted, while the lines are mounted. You wanna tighten that down snug tight to make sure that um, hose doesn't wiggle free. Remember these um, single cylinder motorcycles vibrate a lot. So once that's it's on there nice and snug, you can see it pinching the hose. Um, that's good. All right, so now we're going to, we've got the lines all set up, we're gonna snug these M5 bolts finger tight down in here, and then use our socket tool. So you want these at about 12 Newton meters, or about seven foot pounds. Socket tool here with the M5 in there to tighten that into place. So again, you're not going for too tight, it's into aluminum. Okay, so we're gonna set the M5 tightening bit in there and then come down from the top. Using a handy, very thin socket extension, we're gonna get up here on the top here and try to tighten that down like that. The principal idea here is the top of the engine's cold, the bottom of the engine is hot. So we're gonna have the turn line going in here 
and the outbound line coming in here. So the hot oil will exit here, go across here, and then return back this way. Just seems to make thermodynamic sense. You got the hot oil enter here and then cool and stay on the cool side on the way back. You wanna orient, when you put these hoses on here, you wanna pre-install the clamps, but you wanna orient them in a way that makes them easy to access. Now that you get this into the barb, um, select an orientation that you like that's gonna work. You don't want this to rub against your head or your housing. I'm gonna do kind of angled facing down, uh, snug tight around the end of the hose uh, to secure the hose. Make sure there's a little hose on both sides of the clamp. That way it can pinch down a nice firm connection. And then tighten that down um, I'd say aim for six or seven foot-pounds, finger tight, snug. You don't want that hose coming loose. You'll feel it. It'll start to become stiff, and it'll feel like it's come to a natural stopping spot at hand twisting tight. That's around seven foot-pounds. All right, double check, make sure that feels secure. Then do the same thing for the exit line into the radiator. All right, we're gonna tighten this up too. We're gonna to start with it a little lower and then it'll naturally kind of climb as you tighten it. So you start down at an angle and then as you tighten it, it'll match the upper one. And remember, you're trying to leave a little bit of hose on each side of this clamp so that it has something to clamp down on on both sides. Make sure that hose doesn't pull out. Once you get that lined up and snug, go ahead and snug it down. See how the connector climbs? Eventually, once you get this finger tight, it should look like the one up above. I want that about seven foot pounds, kind of, kind of snug, snug on there. Double check your upper connector, make sure it's nice and snug too. Okay, and there you have it. My unit sticks out a little bit here on this line. Um, we could do something like that. To, to add a little bit of support, I'm going to actually spool a uh, zip tie in here. There's a leftover bracket from the previous air box, and we're just going to tighten that around that one hose there just to keep it from rattling around. Give it a little, just nothing too tight. You don't want to pinch the hose, but just something. Something to keep that secure. Honda uses these brackets. You're gonna wanna zip tie it. I found that one configuration that added a little strength to this setup was to have these lines touch each other like this. Um, the thermodynamic energy transfer between the hot and cold isn't gonna be very significant. So what we'll, what we'll do here is we'll do the same kind of thing. We'll just loosely zip tie these uh, in two positions, like this, and um, that'll that'll minimize the the movement of the brake line, or of these um, cooling lines. Just zip those zip those in there like that, and then uh, cut off the tails like that. And it's uh, just to just to help strengthen the unit because again this is going to vibrate a lot. We'll clip off the the tail from that upper one up here too, just like that. And then you can rotate those knobs uh, inward there like that, and that'll just help to keep the lines from vibrating as much. All right. Oh, I forgot to mention, uh, in the instructions, it says the oil capacity is 75 to 100 cc. So that's roughly about four ounces of additional oil capacity uh, for the radiator. So when you're doing the oil change, make sure you add an extra four ounces to accommodate for the oil cooler. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day and happy Grom riding. Fire it up and then check the oil level. So it seems to run normally, um, warming up. The oil level's a little low, so I'm gonna add another ounce or two.